Hi everyone, my name is Lillian and I'm gonna make a video about all the classes that I took my sophomore fall. So this fall I took five classes but only 14 units and I am a computer science major. So for this video I'm gonna talk about all the classes I took and for each class I'll go over why I took that class, the class content, class structure, workload, assignments, grading, um, my advice and then my experience with the class and at the end i'll talk about my like schedule and how i felt about taking all the classes together so the five classes that i took this semester was data 100 which is principles to data science i also took cs 188 which is introduction to artificial intelligence cogsci 1b which is introduction to cognitive science youtube a 135 which is personal finance and um, arch 142 which is a sustainability and architecture seminar before I get into this video, I want to have I want to make a little disclaimer that this semester is pretty special because we did have the strike going on for the last three weeks of classes, which really affected two of my classes a lot. So basically what happened is that there is the largest academic um, strike in history. So a lot of student workers across the entire University of California system, not just Berkeley, uh, protested and stopped working. But basically what that meant in terms of my classes is that two of my classes, um, which relied heavily on student instructors, Data 100 and CS188, kind of stopped instruction in the last three weeks. So all that was going on was lectures because the student workers are really handling everything else in terms of grading, um, like releasing the homeworks. Um, we just didn't have any assignments for the last three weeks and then our finals were made a lot easier because the student workers also do a lot of work in creating the exams. First, I'm going to talk about Data 100, which is Principles of Data Science. I took this class for my major and also just because it's a very useful class if you want to do data science in the future. And this class covers a lot of really useful data science content, a lot of which showed up in my data science interviews. So it covers things like data visualization, data cleaning, uh, SQL, principal component analysis, machine learning, linear regression, logistic regression, decision trees, feature engineering, gradient descent, cross fertilization uh, just all of those important data science and machine learning concepts. And due to the strike, we did not fully cover logistic regression, decision trees, and clustering. Okay, now moving on to class structure, we had lectures two times a week on Tuesday and Thursday for one and a half hours, and then we also had discussions, which was one hour, and we also had a lab that we did on our own time, and those took about an hour to complete, and we would get help from Ed, so just posting on Ed, which is like our class online form. There's also exam prep discussion, which was optional, but you could attend that discussion and you would basically just work through exam level problems, and we had one midterm and one final. Okay, in terms of workload, workload was not too bad. It was pretty light, so we just had weekly homeworks and weekly labs, so those are the assignments that were due, and we also had discussion, although discussion is like participation, but the homeworks did not take too long. They're typically Jupyter notebooks, so typically coding. Um, the written homeworks, there were some written homeworks, which was more math and like some proof questions. Those took longer. And the labs are also typically a Jupyter notebooks as well, and those typically take about an hour. Yeah, and we also had two projects, although I didn't get to do the second project because of the strike. The projects were also not too time intensive. It was just a part that was like creating your own model that took a lot of time. And I'm just going to attach a screenshot of the grading scale. This is um, the grading scale, I think it changed a little bit because of the strike, but in terms of grading, I felt like it was pretty fair. Yeah, and my overall experience with the class was very positive. I really enjoyed the class. I felt like I learned a lot, and a lot of the concepts that I learned in the class were later brought up in like my data science interviews, so it's definitely a really useful class, and like you're definitely going to use a lot of the concepts in this class later on if you're going to do data science or even any other field. Yeah, so my advice for this class is to go to Office Hours and Ed. Those are both two resources that pretty much every class at Berkeley has, but they are very useful. And also get started early on the projects, especially the part where you have to build your own model, because a lot of that is kind of like trial and error in terms of like which parameters that you want to include, like feature engineering. So you want to make sure you have enough time to really test everything out and then you're not scrambling last minute to get the test error or accuracy that you need. And the next class I'm going to talk about is CS188, which is Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. So I decided to take this class because I'm pretty interested in artificial intelligence. And this class is known to be one of the computer science classes with a lighter workload. And since I was doing recruiting for summer internships during that time, I wanted a lighter workload semester. 
So in terms of class content, this um, class does an introduction to a lot of different artificial intelligence topics. So like search, Markov decision processes, um, hidden Markov models, no networks, although we didn't get to cover that because of the strike, um, constraint, constraint satisfaction problem, Bayes nets, like sampling, inference, um, reinforcement learning. So yeah, a lot of these concepts also were kind of built off of some of the lower division classes that we took, like CS61B and CS70. So I definitely recommend like taking those classes or being comfortable with those topics before going to this class. And for class structure, we had lecture two times a week on Tuesday and Thursday for one and a half hours. We also had discussion for one hour a week and an optional exam prep discussion, and we did not have any labs. We had one midterm and one final, which were three hours long each. And in terms of workload, we just had an electronic homework a week and then a written homework. This electronic homework was on Gradescope, which is a website that a lot of um, classes use at Berkeley. And it would be like multiple choice or select all that apply. And you also get like automatic feedback on whether or not the uh, question, the answer you chose was right. And the written homeworks are questions from past exams. Yeah, and those are typically harder, but um, you only get like one question from a past exam, so it's not too much work. And we did have five projects throughout this class, and they were all centered around making an AI Pac-Man. So for our projects, we did like a search Pac-Man, a reinforcement learning, um, yeah, just like different types of AI Pac-Man projects. And these projects are kind of like fill in the blank code, is kind of like going off of the algorithm that we learned in class, although I personally never found the project that easy as just like filling in and pattern matching, but um, yeah, the project is definitely not as intensive as like some 61B projects. If you're familiar with that class at Berkeley, I think the projects kind of reminded me of like 61A because there's a lot of like skeleton code and like pseudocode given and you just kind of need to fill out one part of the code. And now I'm going to talk about my experience with the class. So in the beginning of the class, I was actually feeling a little bit insecure about taking it because not a lot of sophomores take this class in their first semester. I'm not saying that to be like, oh, I'm so smart. I took this class my first semester, uh, sophomore year, because most of the first semester sophomores generally take CS170, which is actually a harder class, or like a lot of first semester sophomores will be taking CS70, but I just took that class over the summer. So yeah, I felt like since I was younger and I didn't have as much like coding experience, that I would be kind of left behind or I wouldn't be as smart as my classmates. That feeling kind of stuck with me for the first um, week or so until I started doing the project and I was like, oh wait, I know how to code, like this is fine. But yeah, other than that, the class was all, it was like, I found the concepts pretty tricky. Um, yeah, but like the workload wasn't too bad. And I also ended up doing this class pass no pass, which I actually forgot to talk about. Overall, I, found the concepts in the class cool. I feel like this class was kind of an okay experience for me. I feel like I would have enjoyed it more, but like, it's okay. Like what happened happened. I don't regret anything that I did. Um, yeah, and in terms of advice for this course, I would to get a project partner because it makes life so much easier and you can get a project partner. You guys can like split up the work. Literally, you will move through things a lot easier. Also recommend to get a good study group because I had a really good study group this semester and probably the best study group I've ever had. It just made me feel like so supported in the class and they were all so smart and it was a really great time. So definitely recommend getting a good study group and just for any class in general. But okay, I'm gonna talk about why I PMP this class. Basically because of the strike, a lot of majors were given the option to take their major class pass and pass and still count towards their major and like their degree. So. I decided to take CS188 pass the pass for two reasons. The first reason was because I did not want to study for the final. Um, I think that if I tried hard on the final, I could have gotten an A, but like tried hard. And also the exams are really hard. Um, they did simplify the exam, but like I was not confident when they said they would make the exam easier because like, I don't know, you can like never really trust people. And I also had an interview that day. So I got a call that I had a um, like a final round interview and I could either take that during my uh, CS188 final or during a final for my other classes. And since I could PNP CS188, I decided to just PNP that class and then to do the interview instead. So the next class I'm gonna talk about is COX-I1B, which is Introduction to Cognitive Science. 
I took this class for my major requirement and also because it seemed like a pretty interesting class and not too heavy of a workload. This class covered a lot of different concepts in cognitive science. I could not really tell you what concepts were covered though because I did not go to lecture. But the class structure was lecture once a week um, on Mondays from two to five. So it was a three hour lecture. And then we would have weekly quizzes on B courses, Canvas. And then we had one final, which was a essay and then a video. So as you can see, very light course load class. And yeah, the workload was extremely light. The quizzes that were weekly were like, um, were all multiple choice questions or select all that apply. And those were like, 15 to maybe 30 questions, but those were very easy to complete because you could just go off the slides or the readings to find the answers. So you don't need to go to lecture in this class actually. And then there were like a few assignments in between, which are all like very easy to complete, um, did not take me too long. I really did not spend too much time on this class. The final paper was 2,500 words, and then we had a presentation as well. But for that presentation, you can basically read off of what you said in the paper. And that presentation was had to be like at least 12 minutes long. Then in terms of grading, um, grading was just based on the assignments that I talked about. I'll attach a screenshot of the grading here. But yeah, I think um, it's pretty easy to get a good grade in this class as long as you do the assignments on time. Yeah, so my experience with this class is that I actually realized I'm not that interested in cognitive science. Yeah, it's just not something that interests me, but I think it's really cool. But I do like how for the final paper, I could really just delve into a cognitive science field that I was interested in and not necessarily something that we learned about in class. So I really enjoyed that. And yeah, I overall had a pretty good time with this class, although I didn't spend too much time actually in it. Um, but yeah, it was really great. The professor was really nice, engaging, and yeah, just overall good guy. My advice for this class would be to not go to lecture if you don't want to go to lecture, and also to keep up with the assignments on Canvas because if you don't go to lecture, you want to make sure that you're still keeping up to date with the class and you're not missing any assignments. All right, and now I'm going to talk about UGBA 135, which is personal finance. So this is a two unit class and I took this class because I wanted to learn more about personal finance. And for class structure, there were weekly two hour lectures on Monday from 12 to 2 and then we had one midterm and one final. Um, in terms of class content, we covered all our different personal finance topics. So we covered like credit cards, savings, um, bankruptcy, retirement accounts, stocks and bonds, taxes, buying a house, um, renting a car, owning a car, taxes, insurance, healthcare. We also talked about love and money, which is not a topic that I expected to learn about, but honestly, it was a very fun unit. I mean, it wasn't really a unit, it was just one lecture, but it was still a fun lecture. And the workload was pretty light. It's a two unit class, so workload isn't supposed to be very heavy, but we would have a weekly quiz on Canvas, and this was typically about eight multiple choice questions based on a video that we had to watch, but we were also given video transcripts. So if you don't want, want to watch the video, you can just read the video transcript. And we had about five assignments that were longer. So some of these assignments were like um, making your own budget, although you didn't actually make your own budget, you just like made a hypothetical budget based on the information they gave you. And then like longer um, multiple choice quizzes and like true falses. So this would be like 70 questions, like 50 question assignments. But honestly, it's really not bad. And yeah, those were pretty much, that's pretty much it for the workload. Yeah, in terms of grading, it's actually a pretty tight boundary to get an A. I would say it's a bit tricky to get an A. You do need to get like, um, yeah, you can't really miss any points because the A boundary is 94 points, which is like kind of high for an A. Somehow I got an A in this class, even though my, um, even though my calculator grade was a 93, I don't know what they did, but yeah, I pretty much scored like a 90 on the midterm and then like an 85 on the final. And then I got like a few points off on all the assignments and um, the quizzes and stuff. So yeah, that's what it looked like for me to get an A and I like barely got an A. Yeah, in terms of advice, so one piece of advice I have is actually take this class with your crush or partner because the professor says in his love and money part, um, love and money lecture that if you meet your future spouse in this class he will show up to your wedding and give you a really nice wedding gift but um yeah some more serious advice is just if you're taking this class for letter grade like um try not to get points off on the assignments try to keep your grade as nice as it can be 
because even though the final and um, midterm are all multiple choice questions and they like, select all that comply, it's very comprehensive and it's kind of hard to just like memorize everything. So try your best not to give points off. I know it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, and in my experience with this class is that I really enjoyed the class. I found it pretty fun. Um, I did have trouble paying attention during lecture because it was two hours long, but it was still pretty fun. I really liked how it got me thinking about personal finance topics. Uh, I would always be like texting my parents like, oh, should I open an IRA account? Like, what should I do? Where, where should I invest in? So I really like how it got me thinking about personal finance and I would always text my roommate these like stuff I learned from personal finance from the class as well so yeah i really enjoyed the class okay now i'm going to talk about my final class which is arch 142 which is a sustainability and architecture seminar this class was one unit and i took it because i wanted to learn more about sustainability and architecture and i really like seminar classes because it's an easy way to learn about a new topic so in terms of class content we had guest speakers come in every week to talk about different topics within sustainability and architecture. So we had some architects from the Google Bayview campus come in and talk to us. We also had some people who created some like building um, sustainability standards come in and talk to us. But honestly, my favorite speaker was the actual professor because she was a really good speaker. She had like really cool content, super engaging. I thought she was the best speaker. In terms of class structure, it's just a seminar, so we would meet weekly on Fridays from 10 to 11 a.m. Yeah, since it was a seminar, the workload was very light. After each talk, we would have to submit a few sentences reflection on the talk about what we learned, um, how we can like build our network from this talk, and there was also attendance. So yeah, there was an attendance sheet that we would pass around in the beginning of class, and because it's a seminar, you take it like pass, no pass, but in order to pass, you need to attend. You could only miss like two classes and you can only do an additional two classes as hybrid so you just watch the recording and then you submit a reflection um yeah that might change for future classes but that's what the policy looked like for my semester and then for our final that was just like maybe a paragraph reflection on how this class has changed you and like what this class has taught you so it was also not too difficult yeah in terms of my experience with this class is um i think I kind of regret taking this class because I realized that I'm not too interested in architecture and sustainability. I think that they're really cool topics and I really admire people who are into them and who go into the field, but I just don't think it's something that I'm like super interested in. But you know, you kind of need to like take a class like this to realize that it's not something that you're super interested in. And I did have a really good time at the first lecture and the last lecture, which were for the actual professor herself. The last lecture she talked about sensory delight and I really liked that lecture. Um, it was just something that was super interesting to me. So yeah, I think that this class was worth it for the last lecture because I really enjoyed it and also the workload is not heavy at all. Um, you do get one unit, but it is pass no pass, so it's not like it will boost your GPA. But if you're like struggling for units, I definitely recommend taking a seminar class in general. It's super helpful. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about my overall thoughts on the semester, if I think that taking all these classes together was a good idea. And I honestly think that it was, this um, course load schedule was like not very heavy in terms of workload. All of my classes only had one midterm and one final, so that was very nice and wasn't too stressed about exams. I think this semester I was also doing some other stuff like clubs and recruiting, which made it pretty hectic, but I definitely didn't feel like too much pressure academically because I didn't have too much workload. Although like, I'm not saying that, although like I would say that my classes were still hard, like the concepts were still difficult, especially CS188. And my favorite class was definitely Data 100. I felt like I learned a lot and it really helped me in terms of interview prep. Yeah, and then my least favorite class was um, architecture, the architecture seminar because it kind of felt like a chore because I wasn't too interested in the topic. And my most, time intensive class with CS188 because I found the concepts difficult to learn. Yeah, but that was my semester. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. I think this will probably be one of my easier semesters I'll have at Berkeley, which is like kind of sad, but I think that's just what it is. Yeah, I had a pretty good semester and I generally enjoyed these classes.